and welcome to tonight's roundtable. I'm Kate Burnham, the superintendent of the Lunenburg Public Schools. And today we're going to talk about our extended day program and our early learning center. My guest today is the director of the program, Tammy Perry. Thank you for having me, Kate. Thanks for being here. I think that this is um, very timely. Yes. There's <laughs> lots of uh, information uh, out there, and uh, we want to make sure that folks have the most up-to-date information because there have been some recent changes yes. programmatically. Yes, there have. So let's start with um, a little bit of background. How long have you been part of the, the program here in Lunenburg? <laughs> well, I've been with the district for 24 years. I started out as a kindergarten assistant. Um, in 2006, I became the coordinator of the extended day program, and then when the other coordinator left, I became the director. I have been in that position since 2006 to the present. Very nice. Long run. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's, um, because there are multiple programs yes. here to talk about today, mm -hmm. so let's jump in first with the Early Learning Center, which is a, a preschool program. program. It's basically the Early Learning Center is a, like a play program, play school with academics thrown in. We we basically get them kindergarten ready. We introduce kindergarten readiness skills to prepare them, like name writing, letter identification, letter formation, um, and b basically do a craft to follow up that reinforcement of the letter of the week. When the letter of the week, is, when the letters are all done and completed, we go by themed based units for the rest of the school year. Very nice. So, how <coughs> is the program itself actually structured? We have two sessions, morning and afternoon, with the option of staying all day. We have 8.30 to 11, with the option of lunch included, or 12 to 2.30, and sometimes the children will come in early to get that lunch. Okay. Um, and then it's opened whatever meets the parents' need until we're full. It's 12, per 12 students a session, and as soon as it's filled up, then we, we are capped. Okay, very good. And what ages? <coughs> Do three and four-year-olds. Three preschool. and yeah, four-year-olds. Preschool age. What's the registration period? It is open until full. Okay. And when, no. does, when does the registration typically open? We typically tell parents around February and March because we tend to fill up fast, which we are already, um, being the beginning of May, have already have quite a few slots and only a few left available. So it's good info for viewers at home yes. that might have a two-year-old yes, uh, turning ready. three mm -hmm. um, to and know that they should be watching for that information yes. in February. Yeah, especially if they don't get into the preschool program. So the preschool program and us, we utilize both programs um, on any day uh, to meet the parents' need once again. Okay, so the distinction is that the Lunenburg Public Schools has an integrated preschool Correct. program. Um, that is a program that has um, students who have special needs uh, and their typical peers of, yes. that, of that same age. Um, and what you're saying is, is that sometimes parents do or don't get into that program. Correct. And then they have the option of, of the early learning center yes. as another option. Um, and sometimes parents have a student who has a morning session in the integrated preschool yes. program with us. Yes. And then that child may go to your afternoon correct. early learning center program and a lot for a full day. Yeah, and correct. Um, a lot of our slots are full time because parents are working mm -hmm. um, and because there's limited availability within the preschool program. Right. So. Okay. <coughs> so for registration purposes, um, what's required? What do parents need to have ready to start at registration time? Yes, yep. we need a registration form, an immunization record, and three proofs of residency. Um, unless you have another child in the district, that that information is already in the district database. And the registration form is available on the on, on the, the website. website. Yes. Okay. Is a an appointment required for registration? No. No. Any screening? No. Whereas for our um, kindergarten and pre-K, mm -hmm. there are registration windows, there's screening, Correct. et cetera. Correct. Okay. It's because we're, we're basically, because we're like more of a play school right. versus a preschool, yep. uh, that, that's the difference. Okay. Um, so 
how is it that parents come to know if their child's been accepted into the program? They they submit the <coughs> registration. Yes. No appointment. They mail it in. Mm -hmm. They come by and drop it off. Yeah. Or they'll call me on the phone. Um, usually it's a first come first serve. I will let them know immediately. You know, if, okay. as long as there's a slot available. And if I get a call from a parent and my slots are filled, I'll tell them unfortunately you'd have to be put on a waiting list. Okay. Very good. So when <coughs> does the early learning center? <laughs> start for the year okay. and when does it end okay every year the same yeah. 180 days that that mm -hmm. the school runs no no okay. we, are, we are a different program um, our start date is the first day after Labor Day every year and we will end the uh, Friday before the last day of school for the district so our early learning center so this year uh, as an example mm -hmm. the last day of school for our primary school students is a Friday Yes, um, and it will be the Friday before. Okay. We Very will good. end Early Learning Center, and it's usually we end it with a reception for the parents. Very nice. Yeah, it's a nice way to end. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so <coughs> let's transition into talking about the Extended Day Program. Mm -hmm. And since summertime is just around the corner, let's start with the summer program for okay. the summer. Okay. Our summer program this year, um, it has been voted and approved by the school committee that we will be getting summer program the first full week of July and it will run through August. Um, usually it's the first week in August, that Friday we will end because we usually close two weeks prior to school starting. Okay, so parents can anticipate now with right. that, um, that timeline mm -hmm. approved by the school committee, they can count on the first full week in July yes. as the start. Yes and um, running through August to finish two full weeks prior to the start of school at the end of August. Correct. And this year it will be start date would be July 1st and date will be August 9th. Very good. So what, <coughs> what will the students experience as part of the summer program? Well, the summer program is all themed based with field trips um, also within the weeks. Um, every other Friday we'll have pizza for $2 at an additional cost. And on the opposite weeks, we'll have um, ice cream Sunday making for the children, and then we end it with a on August 9th for a bar with a barbecue for the children. Very nice. Yeah. And um, for an example, like a theme week, food is always a big one. Um, this week, we're planning to go to Extapa for a taco bar, open buffet. Um, Asian Imperial will be coming to us and serve the children at the school. And um, the kids love. We do a train ride to Concord for ice cream. Oh, that's right. yeah. really neat. Yeah, to give them that experience of the train yeah. ride. And then uh, we'll end it with, um, I believe, Bad Larry's to make their own pizza. That sounds like a really great food yeah. week. Yeah, that's, <laughs> a, that's always a big one. So, yeah, we're busy. Yeah, so um, you mentioned that there's additional costs for the pizza every other mm -hmm. week on a Friday. Is there any other additional cost um, attached above and beyond the registration? Uh, the only other cost would be the field trips. Parents okay. pay cash and field trips because we pay the vendor directly. Okay. <laughs> All right. So it's a weekly themed sort of day camp, I guess, is yes. the best way to explain it. Yep. So what are the hours of the day program? The day program, camp hours are considered 9 to 3. Okay. With the additional you can do before and after. So parents can register their child for the week. Mm -hmm. And what's the cost weekly for, for camp? It's $150 a week, except for the week of July 1st, because there's a holiday in the middle of the week, and that would be 120 Okay. from 9 to 3. So can parents register um, for some weeks, or do they have to register for the entire summer? No, it's whatever they want to utilize. Okay. They can be full weeks, and they can be part-time weeks. Okay. Um, so the hours are 9 to 3. Do we provide extended hours in the summertime? Yes, we do. The same as the regular school year. Okay. 7 to 9 and 3 to 5.30. So parents can mm -hmm. opt to mm -hmm. register for camp. Yes. And also register for the additional extended hours either in the morning. Yes. Or the afternoon or both. Correct. Correct. And that will go along with this district coming up in the fall. That That's going to be block billing. Okay. Um, so what does that mean, block billing? Block billing is that 
no matter what time you attend within that block from 7 to 9, you're going to pay that fee of $10. Um, and the same in the afternoon, it would be 3 to 5.30 after camp hours until closing. And that block will be $12.50, uh, regardless of what time you pick up. So the block of time um, is open. We're able to accept children yes. during that time. There's no specific required drop-off time. Mm -mm. So we can accept children as early as? Seven, seven mm -hmm. but perhaps a parent drops off at 7.30, 7.30. or 7.45. Right, they'll still that's get That's okay. Paid. Yeah, that's okay, but they'll still be charged that $10. And in the afternoon, we, we would keep children until 5.30. Mm -hmm. However, parents could pick up at 5 or Correct. 4.30 if, yes. if they chose. Yes. Okay, very good. So let's transition a little bit into the conversation around what extended day programming looks like during the academic school year. Okay. So um, we know that we have some changes coming. Yes. First off, let's ta talk about when does registration for the fall begin? Registration for the fall, um, I'm currently accepting registrations right now. Okay. Because of the changes parents are asking, um, I'm asking them to just use this year's registration, cross off the year, and indicate that they acknowledge um, the changes that are coming up with the school year. And there are changes that have been approved by the, s the school committee for next school year, and we'll talk Correct. about those shortly. Yes. But you are, based on the approval of those changes, now revising the handbook. Yes. And that handbook we anticipate bringing before the school committee June, June 5th. 5th. Correct. Uh, as soon as that um, is voted and approved, mm -hmm. um, what's the plan to get that information out to parents? I believe it will be an email district-wide. And typically we, we have the handbook posted yes, on, the website. on the website as Correct. well. Correct, and there will be a last page for parents to sign off saying that they acknowledge the handbook and with the changes. Okay, very good. Hmm. So, um, when will registrations close? Right now we are looking for the fall and summer and registrations summer, yep. will close um, June 14th for both programs. Um, we are anticipating getting summer information out today yep. as we speak. Um, and and parents for the wait list for the fall should be notified by July 1st if okay. they got an available slot. Okay. Um, so let's talk a little bit about some of the changes that were approved <laughs> for the upcoming year. Okay. So we've already discussed block billing and what that was about. So that's part of one of the changes. Okay. Um, we are eliminating um, as-needed registration, so there's not going to be any more drop-offs. Um, just so we can budget and staff accordingly. Right. And um, but they're going to have to have a set schedule. So a set schedule is basically um, you have to set your days and they, they cannot be changed. So if you come on a Tuesday, Wednesday, that doesn't mean you can drop your child off on a Friday. Um, you have to stick to those days. And that set schedule is also going to be a five-day priority for parents um, that are made of that commitment for the five days a week. Okay. So... What you're saying is that as registrations come in, mm -hmm. we fill slots with those who are looking for five days a week. Correct. First. Correct. And then based on available space, mm -hmm. we then um, fill the program seats with, with partial Part weeks. Time. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, and we're, just to be clear, all of the staff, um, participate in uh, safety training. So yes. we have first aid training for our staff. We have first aid EpiPen. EpiPen. AED defibrillator. Yep. Um, CPR. CPR. Yes. And some of our staff are also um, CPI. CPI, CPI trained, trained, which is a type of training for um, safe transport yes. of, of a child that may not be fully in control of themselves Correct. in any given moment. Correct. <laughs> which is, it, again, all of those things are around um, ensuring safety for the students that are part of the program. Right. And as part of that, mm -hmm. um, we, we're adding a staff position mm -hmm. in the fall for the afternoon sessions. Yes. Um, 
will be hiring a nurse for the for the program for the first time. Yes, that was approved. Okay. Yes. And um, and because of all that what we're talking about and all the safety um, reasons that we're implementing within the program, that's why there is also a cap of 50. Right. Per building. Right. All of these changes <coughs> actually were were driven by ultimately by by the safety of the program, right? Correct. Ensuring a safe environment mm -hmm. for students Correct. Um, yep. to be with us yes. for the morning or the afternoon. Yes. Um, mm. So in thinking about extended day for, for a viewer who, who may be new in Lunenburg, mm -hmm. a new resident in Lunenburg, or um, perhaps they're getting ready to send their first uh, child yeah. off to, to the schools and yes. they're, they're <laughs> thinking about um, this, this program as an option for mm -hmm. them. What, what are the options available to parents through this program? Basically what we'll be doing in the program when they attend it um, is basically we have arts and crafts that go after, you know, the child can pick from numerous activities, whether bead making or um, using Play-Doh or shaving cream or the sensory table or just coloring. We have board games. We have puzzles, um, or and we have um, areas of developmental growth where they can play in the centers, like the kitchen area and the block building. So it's basically more like a social atmosphere after school. Okay. Um, so that's the after school hours. Yep. And before. That's the same. Okay. Yes. In the morning. And there's also a homework block, correct? Yes. Yes. We have homework, um, and we state that it's mandatory unless we have verbal or written permission from the parent that the child does not have to do it at extended day. Okay. And um, one other little piece is if the child is disruptive during the homework, um, they will be removed from homework for that day. Okay. <coughs> so we are anticipating a move of mm -hmm. the program from current two locations, one at the primary, one at Turkey Hill Elementary, yes. to <coughs> one location mm -hmm. at uh, TCP. Yes. And there is a morning session and an afternoon session. So the hours of the morning session. The morning will still be 7 to 9. Okay. And the afternoon will be 3.30 to 5.30. Okay. <coughs> um, so, again, block billing for, for those times. Um, what happens, because occasionally it, it does happen, um, parent doesn't make it here in time for the 5.30 pickup time. Um, of course, we will be here for them. <laughs> and um, so basically, if they're late, uh, they'll get charged a dollar fee for every minute that they're late. Okay. Um, and if continuous lateness um, happens, then the child could be dropped from the program. Okay. And that's also in the handbook. And then relative mm -hmm. to uh, safety, another feature that's part of our program um, at drop-off and pick-up would be yes. a parent... Uh, sign, sign in. in. Yes, sign in out loud. <coughs> so the building is secure. Yes. Um, parents upon drop off or pick up would have to buzz, buzz in to, to get in mm -hmm. and would have to sign their child in and out. Right. At, okay. When we were located at TC Pasios a couple years ago, I had a staff member at the front door where parents would go there to sign the child in and out, and then we would radio down okay. and telling, alerting staff that they're either coming down or to get them ready for dismissal. Very good. Okay, so um, another opportunity for parents um, to en enroll the kids in, in the, uh, the program would be on those days where there might be no school due to professional development for staff. Correct. So there's typically, um, you know, two full days in, in an academic school year, yes, that there would be no school for students, and there is school for staff. Yes, they come in for for professional development right. opportunities, right? Right. So what happens um, for for the kids with any changes to the program? Is that something that's still going to be available Those to parents? The full day and half days will be available to parents who are registered within the program. And that will be based out of a, a block billing also. So if your child is dismissed to us at 1230, uh, we're anticipating that you'll be paying uh, the $25 for the afternoon. Okay. So, correct. 12, five, yes. Okay. Until 530. So this and program does remain available yes. to the parents mm -hmm. who are in the program. Right. Both, both 
uh, full right. day PD days. Right. One, this upcoming uh, school year will be one day in September, one day in November. Okay. And then there are two half day professional development days mm -hmm. where the students are released half day. Right. Um, again, those days will be one in December and one in March. Okay. Yes, and we will have the availability with that program for those parents. Okay. What about <coughs> school vacation weeks? Uh, right now it's under review and uh, we'll be making a re recommendation to the school committee to um, see if it's feasible to run okay. um, the programs in the fall. They did make a decision around the December break. Mm -hmm. Yes. That the program would not run during the December Correct. break. Correct. Correct. And that will be in the paperwork that is handed out. Okay. So currently we're, we're reviewing um, the program February. for February and April vacation weeks. Yes. And yes. a recommendation will be coming in the fall, in the 2019, fall to the school committee for for approval. Yeah. Okay. So I think we've covered an awful lot of yes. ground. <laughs> um, we know that there is information that will be sent out to all parents relative to the summer program registration. Uh, there will be additional information coming following the June 5th school committee meeting yes. on the updated handbook mm -hmm. for the program. Um, if parents have any questions or um, are looking for, for information, um, where, should they, where should they go first? They can uh, email me at tperry at lunabergonline.com. Um, right now I can give you the primary school number where okay. I'm housed out of now. It's 978-582-4122 extension 3105. And then if we are um, anticipating the move and we are moved to TC Passios, our phone number will be available ASAP Okay. for, for contact. Post it on, on the website, yes. I would imagine. Yes. And we would always uh, encourage folks to, to look at the, the website for information all, on the program. Yes, all information is posted on the website Great. that we've talked about today. Great. <laughs> That's it. Very excited. Okay. All yeah, right. Another so, school year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much for spending a little bit of time with me today to go over the programs and, and get some information out to, to residents in town. And um, again, hopefully this provided some additional clarifying information yes, I hope with so. the changes that are coming. And um, again, if, if any viewers uh, have any questions or concerns, reach out anytime. Tammy's always... I'm available. Available <laughs> and, and uh, has good information. I, I might not get it back to you right away because I'm busy, but um, yeah, you, I will get back to you. You are a working director. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I will say that. You don't, you don't have don't. a nice office where, you, where you're <laughs> no. sitting at a desk. And no, I have kids all around me. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Which is not a bad thing. No, no, I enjoy every day of it. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank Very you good. for having me. Thank you. We hope that uh, you enjoyed the show, found it informative, and we hope to see you again next time.